Warning, this video is intended for those who've already played this game and the original Exilia. So, spoilers and watch at your own discretion and all that. <laughs> Tales of Exilia 2, without a doubt one of the weirdest games in the entire franchise, if not the weirdest. You'd think coming off what I believe to be the perfect starting point in the series, this game would be just as accessible and representative of the series at hand, but nope. This game's different, and different is freaking terrifying, but even still, you look at me, my channel, my Twitter page, at Zafer Revo, please follow me, I'm lonely and need support, all these things, and you just think, this guy is weird. I bet he likes freaks. And you're right! <laughs> So Exilia 2 is, without a doubt, one of my favorite Tales games, but why? Why is it so weird in the first place and what does it do to stand above most of my favorite franchise, including the original? Well sit back and I'll try to explain just that. Isn't that right, Luger? Oh Luger, you have such a way with words. See, it's funny because Ludger doesn't have a voice. Lots to talk about here, but more importantly, why is this game considered so weird to begin with? I mean, once you've played one Tales game, you've played them all, right? <laughs> okay, that's enough. Basically, it's the game's structure that takes the forefront, specifically in terms of the story and gameplay. Most of, if not all, Tales games follow your typical formula of JRPGs. You know, the town to town, dungeons and world map journey to save the world, which isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, because this series masters and twists on that very storytelling concept, a lot of these games end up being among my favorites. However, I always love when a game does something different, and this sequel does just that. In a way though, it kinda needed to, because as much as I love and will defend OG Exilia until the day I die, my gosh, that story was a whole mess. To make this game not have as tangled of a plot as the original, even though the end of itself is kinda hard to do, they decided to not only break the story into chapters, but also introduce character quests. These give side stories to further develop the OG cast, as well as going deeper into the lore of the worlds and civil war s conflict between Olympios and Rize Maxia. Then main chapters, of course, focus on the story of Luger and El trying to reach the land of Canaan, as well as dealing with the shenanigans of Spurious Corporis and incorporating the story's main themes. That was a mouthful, wow. Or rather, it sounds like a lot, but the main story isn't your typical journey to save the world. It's Luger trying to get the keys to the land of Canaan over the course of the game while doing his job. So in a way, it's a weird fantasy life simulator that sounds incredibly dumb when I say it out loud, but man, does it work. Being that you're playing as an Olympian this time around, which is the more modern world of the two, you really get a different perspective of the worlds Exilia had already fleshed out in the first game. These are the same locations with only a handful of new ones, but the different style of progression and almost open world aspect made this trek feel fresher than a box of steaming hot pizza. Huh? Even still, the journey Luger himself goes through is a great one, which is a strange thing to say because he's a silent protagonist right? Well, kinda. This game goes all VLR on us and makes him silent to hide the whole Victor plot twist, which is a bit distracting, no lie, and one of my few problems with the game. You do get to hear your choices voiced on New Game Plus, which is nice, but you know. Either way, he has an established arc of having to learn that life throws ridiculously tough decisions at you, and sometimes you have to sacrifice in order to protect the ones you really love. Choice and sacrifice, the game's main themes. I love them. I love them so much. It makes for so many depressing, dark moments over the story but helps to deliver an incredibly mature narrative overall. Fractured Mila accepting her death for Prime Mila to return for the greater good, Ludger killing his own brother to save El, and finally the beautiful ending of Ludger sacrificing himself in order for El to live on. <laughs> Oh, I'm crying again. Seeing his and her relationship blossom over the course of the game was absolutely beautiful to be quite frank, and was one of the best driving forces in a tale story at this point in time. It's such a good partnership. And it's all spearheaded by a character hard to analyze due to not having a voice, but when you stand back and look at him, you notice that Luker is one of the better protagonists in the series. A nice guy who just wants to live a normal life, but is faced with the hardships of making choices that don't boil down to the good one and the bad one. It's a story that's so down to earth and real, while ending with the most satisfying conclusion and my personal favorite ending in the franchise. Though it is weird that this game is split into chapters, huh? Wonder why they decided to do- I have bad news. It's payback time. All right, listen. I know, I know. The depth system is hated. You can't move on unless you pay off X amount of gall because of story reasons and yeah, that's pretty dumb. Here's why I don't hate it. In fact, 
kind of love it. And I know I was being rational at first, but now I'm just talking out my butt. But just give me a second, give me a chance, and I'll defend this as much as I can. Or no, let's not call it defending because I can't deny that blocking this story by having to pay in game isn't a very smart decision in the slightest. But one, it's ridiculously easy to get galled in this game to the point where you'll be swimming in it, or like me, forget that you even need to pay to move on because you passed the threshold ages ago. And two, it's a factor that basically forces you to fall in love with the game. And I really, really respect that, to be honest. You have to get invested in the world. You have to get invested in the side quests. You have to care about the cast to get through the character quests. You have to love Exilia 2 in order to get the most out of it. And that just makes for such a special experience to me. While investing me in one of my favorite stories of the series, it has the gall to tell me that I need to learn to love this game in order to get the most out of it. And that's just so awesome, man. Besides doing all the side quests, the reason I love combat can be for the same thing. The game's hard as hell, so I have to learn the ins and outs of the characters I want to play as to make it out on top. I, like Ludger, have to care about Elle so much that I'm willing to have the link between myself and the game die for her, and only then will the true ending be as satisfying as it's trying to be. It's so freaking ambitious, and I love that. Is this a perfect game, or at least my favorite Tales game? No, and no. I have so many problems with this game. Some of the dungeons still have no music, pop-up is super bad more times than I can ignore, and there are a few bosses that teetered on the more unfair side of things, but I really don't care. I was enjoying myself so much this previous playthrough and really grew to appreciate everything Exilia 2 tried to do as a sequel and as another title in my favorite video game franchise. And that is why I love Tales of Exilia 2.